and welcome to the MBS2 Reviews. I am your host, Norman Sanso. Joining me today is Silver Quill. I prefer to be called the Super Elite Silver Quill. Super Elite Silver Quill, all right? Yes, that's L33T because somehow that's cool and hip and jiggy with it, yo. Word. Ay, ay, ay. So, um, <laughs> I got good, I, I, I got no segue for this. Um, like we mentioned last week, we're going to talk about Superman vs. the Elite, a Patreon sponsored video by Master of Lag. So, uh, what, what can I say about this one? Well, I, I guess I can start off with a summary first. This is one of DC's animated movies, and it stars Superman fighting the elite. And, well, <laughs> the title is a dead giveaway. But in this uh, movie, it tells the story of what happened if the superhero does the most logical thing, and that thing is take down... Or take the how do I want to do this? Like, how, how, what's the wording here? I don't want to say that key word. Well, I wouldn't even call it the most logical thing. Oh, what happens when a superhero is tempted to decide the law rather than serve it? Ah, yes. So in this story, some people get their wish, and it's not what it cracks up to be. First impressions are your order. Um, last week you went first, so I think I'll take the chair now. Please do. This story, how do I put this? When I first saw it, I didn't really like it. Just because of the fact that, oh, Superman, you're not in your proper mindset, blah, 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 and so on. It's like, eh, it's kind of an okay movie. But after rewatching it and after being exposed to other stories with similar ideas, Injustice is a good example. I like this comic. Or I like this movie. This movie was really, really fun to watch and it teeters on the line of what would it have happened if Superman just go the extra mile or got pushed that extra step or gone to the dark side as they say what would have happened and this story tells a good reason why he doesn't do that and overall the voice cast the characters even the elite and the stories that it's based on which is uh, what's so funny about truth, justice, and the American way is not bad. I do like this movie. Um, after rewatching it, I find it entertaining, and the theme that it presents us is really good. And what about you, Silver? This is one of my favorite uh, DC animated films for the simple fact that Superman does not get a lot of credit for what he does. It's, and I say this having just seen the Wonder Woman movie last weekend. Superheroes represent ideals. They're, they're present to fight the bad guy and we stand in awe of their powers, but their actions are always calling people to be more, to say, stand up and, and do more. There are people in their cowardice or their cynicism who say the world works this way and there's nothing you can do about it, so you might as well just be cruel. And here's a hero saying, no, it isn't. The world is what you make of it. If you stand up and stand for something, you can make, you can change how the world is. And I'm more a fan of that view than of the cynical perspective. So here's Superman sta- trying to stand tall as an ideal. And people are, are tempted by the, the violent and the final, final solution that the elite represent. And it's a struggle for him to try and Not just win the day in a battle, but win the hearts and minds of the public and help them realize there's a different way to do things. And it does tackle that long-standing issue, why do you keep having a rogues gallery come back when you could just finish them in one blow? True that. Given how Superman has been presented recently in media, both in the Injustice alternate universe and those DC films, (laughs) Mm -hmm. I like seeing Superman be the good guy. <laughs> Not the guy who's trying to decide if we're worth saving or if he should do this. He's already decided. He said, there's a, there's something good and pure is outside of me. I am in service to that, to that. That's why I don't make the rules. That's why I don't decide for people, but I still believe in it. Yeah. And that's what we're missing with some of the, 
DC movies, um, live action movies that we've been getting, like we've missing that element. The thing with Superman is easy. He is the embodiment of everything that is good. What's so hard about that? Like, he's good. You should achieve to be him or aspire to be like him. But no, no, no. You have to be all dark and edgy and Batman like, And The only thing people seem to struggle with is that they think a good character is not an interesting character. Hmm, that's the problem there. But I think that's false. I think you just have to be a little bit more... Well, it's kind of like uh, Samurai Jack. You show them in these difficult situations, you show it taking a toll on them, but they still find their way through by sticking to what they believe in. Mm -hmm. True that. And, well, as per usual, we are going to go deep into spoilers. And like last week, we're not going to go scene by scene because the movie's interesting and I want you guys to go watch it. So we're going to go with themes for this one. Because I think the themes for this one is really more interesting than the story itself. So if you guys have not watched it, uh, please do. And welcome back. So let's start off with the big blue here. The main hero of the story, Super Guy. So well, what can we say about him? What is not known about this guy? He's in the media a lot. Like everybody who knows the S already knows who he is. Well, I think one of the biggest juxtapositions for him is the theme of his upbringing versus, uh, was it Mr. Black, Manchester Black? Mm -hmm. Which, by the way, I think that's just a step up from I'm British guy. <laughs> yeah. He wears a Union Jack shirt, has the thickest accent, and all the fancy British words you can ask for. <laughs> the dude just needs to be sipping tea and crumpets in the middle of battle, and you've got a perfect stereotype. Oh, uh, no, man. He's a soccer hooligan. I mean, football hooligan. So he has to be uh, drinking some Carlsberg or even have some meat and taters? I, I don't know. Bangers and mash? Yeah, that's it. There we go. But uh, Superman was raised by Ma and Pa Kent, and nobody knows that. Mm -hmm. But he enjoyed, the, he enjoyed this upbringing of you know, being loved, taught values, sort of seeing the best this world has to offer. Manchester Black and his sister were raised in an abusive household, and so they only got to see the worst of people. I still believe that there is a there's an element unique to people and how they react to a situation. There's also the question of what does your environment breed? If you put someone in an environment where violence and and cruelty are the main act are the main motives for people or the uh, the constant then yes, it's going to impact how they grow up and how they view the world. And we, in essence, create our own monsters. One of the big fortunes with Superman is he landed in Smallville, USA. <laughs> yep. That just being around simple, kind people created one of the greatest uh, champions for humanity. Yep. And that's a big difference because... Uh, there's a comic, I think it's, uh, well, there's another DC animated movie called, um, Flashpoint Paradox. It's another, based on another comic, blah, blah, blah. But long story short, it's what would have happened if Superman didn't land in, uh, Smallville, but instead land in downtown Metropolis. And that is a scary thought. And what they shown is that he is one messed up little kid. Yeah, he's been locked in a cell for his entire life. Mm -hmm. And suddenly being exposed to yellow sun, Oof, that's not going to be fun for him. He wants out of there. True that. But uh, in this story, we get the Superman in Smallville, and he's established already. And from the story here, we already know that Lois Lane knows who Clark Kent is. So, yay, um... No need to jump to hurdles. We already know that's good. And she's kind of the voice of the people for him. She is able to confront him about the changing uh, opinions. Mm -hmm. And she has almost the same views as the public. And example is, uh, we get to see the Atomic Skull and his first fight with him. And the Skull here, or the Atomic Skull here, just wants to have a one-on-one -on -one with Superman. And that's about it. And all the carnage that he's done to Metropolis and Superman just sends him to jail. Everybody wants swift 
vicious punishment. But no, nah, that's not Superman's job. He even says that violence is not the right way. Um, I'm not a jury, judge and executioner. That's Judge Dredd's job. He's here to uphold the law. And, well, he's doing a good job at it. But sometimes when you have reoccurring villains that come in and destroy the town, would it be much simpler to just off a character or off a villain? If you think about it, if Batman were to off the Joker, Gotham City will be saved. Uh, but even Batman, even Batman, grim and gritty Batman just says, I can't do that. It's, it's too easy to go the next step and then step after that. Mm-hmm. You make one, you make that compromise and suddenly your whole campaign is something different. But here's the thing. Everyone likes to romanticize about if we were harder, if we were tougher. This kind of reflects the nationalism I see taking uh, so many countries. We romanticize if we were just a little bit more cruel, we'd be more secure. And I don't believe that's true. I think we'd actually weaken ourselves. People say, oh, let's let's cast out people who aren't uh, native-born. Let's close our borders. Let's just huddle up and we'll be more secure. I... Don't think that's true. And Superman and his struggle with the elite kind of says that. If you simply rely on what's easy and only pursues your own narrow interests, you're going to end up the weaker for it. True. And the thing is with this scenario here is that, sure, like if you offer a villain, it's, it's the easy way out. The government is just going to kind of say, okay, he was a dick, so we'll... We're okay with it, Superman. Yeah, as long as you just don't kill anyone important for the future. So we're all cool. And the thing is with villains, they sometimes want redemption. Who are you to say that you're the judge during executioner for said convict villain? Who knows? Probably, well, let's just put this. Um, let's just say Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn is known to be a known assailant to the Joker. And if we off her, we won't get her redemption story or we won't get her wanting to have a redemption. And if I do understand right, she's kind of a good guy now, probably. It's hard to keep track sometimes. Although the government might say, Superman, we don't want you to kill those people. We want to use them in our suicide squads. Yeah. But you didn't hear that from us because the suicide squad doesn't exist. But it totally does. Yeah. But still... uh. Future franchise aside, sometimes people or villains do want redemption. And even saying the word redemption reminds me of ponies. Because think about it. Discord. Wouldn't it be easy just to lock Discord away and throw him into the bottom of the ocean? Wouldn't it be easy to just put Starlight Glimmer, sorry, yeah, put Starlight Glimmer into Tartarus or Sunset Shimmer into some deep space place or prison? Wouldn't it be easy? But the thing is, they want to change. They have the capability of changing. So to outright say, no, you don't deserve it. You deserve to rot in Tartarus. So Superman here says, now I believe in the justice system and I'll leave that decision to the state. Uh, no, I, I'm in agreement. Although we talk about leaving things to the state, I'm also thinking about the uh, the, the international conflict. Let's see here. Yeah, yeah the international conflict was oh, a sub was a, story for this one. Yeah, Bialya. Yeah, Bialya, and I think another country was it. Uh, well, l- let's just see. Lasanti, Poco Lasanti, yeah. Bialya and Poco Lasanti, and they're deploying bio weapons, which is this is the the grand world of superhero comics, where where even even countries in the Middle East have access to biomechanical weapons. You know, Silver, I, I blame that on the Umbrella Corporation. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I could see current policies reacting as, no, I love the Bialias. <laughs> I love their, their biomechanical uh, creations. They've bioengineered some excellent golfers. It's fantastic. <laughs> uh, uh, shots fired. <clears throat> uh, but, but still, but still. The- shots fired is sad. It's very sad. Yeah. I'm crying on the inside. <laughs> uh, but that, that's the subplot for the story too because of two warring nations. They're fighting with one another and Superman here is kind of stuck in between because he's kind of Switzerland here and he's just only helping 
the innocent. Well, Switzerland is neutral. Superman's more proactive. He kind of he does throw himself into the middle of this arena because he can't stay on the sidelines.、Mm-hmm. And technically, he doesn't represent America. But well, having him say,、uh, "What's the what's the phrase?"、Um, Truth, justice, and the American way. Yeah, he's American. <laughs> well, the ideal of American. I don't want to get too cynical. I love American ideals. I'm the best ideal. Fantastic.、Uh, but still... I'm just gonna keep doing this until I'm out of office. <laughs> Maybe sooner than I thought. I、uh, hope you. <clears throat> but still, su- Superman. Like we, we like the guy. We, we really like him. But the problem is. The current media of what we got here doesn't really represent him well. People like fallen heroes because fallen heroes give us permission to fail ourselves. And I'm not against a hero having to make a hard choice and maybe regretting a decision, but I feel like the people are starting to forget what Superman really represents: our best selves,、mm-hmm. the man of tomorrow, because tomorrow can always be better than today. But maybe we should save his the ending. Oh yeah. Because that's intense. After we talk about the elite, and well, it is versus the elite. So the elite, so the elite are a bunch of well, a lack for a better word, a suicide squad. If you know what I mean by they are ex super.、Um, I'm just gonna say meta humans who have power and decide to go freelance. So you got. Cold Case, The Hat,、uh, Manchester Black, and Menagerie.、Uh, how do you say that case? A menagerie. Yeah, menagerie. Thank you. So, and you also have Menagerie, who's far and away the most disturbing of the lot. And yeah, yeah. I, I mean, some people are into that kind of thing. Yes. No. Look, I know, I know. There's a certain tentacle subset, but usually the tentacles are on the outside. They don't spring from her body. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quite,、uh, quite troubling. Quite troubling. But I'm hungry for calamari now. I don't know why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably. I don't know. But still,、um, there are a bunch of、uh, misfits, like for lack of a better word. Yes, misfits. So let's go for their leader first, Manchester Black. And Manchester Black here is. Uh, uh, British. British, very, very British. <laughs> He's so super British. If you could combine Queen Elizabeth, uh, oh, with uh, oh, who, with Mr. Bean, <laughs> that and and fill them up with every British stereotype, that would be the beginning of Manchester Black. Well, I wouldn't say that. I, I, I just say he's very English. Yes, very English. Super English.、Mm-hmm. Mega English. He just needs a big neon sign on his shoulder saying, "I'm British." Well, he does have、Hello. the Union Jack on、I'm、his shirt.、Person. Hello, I'm a British person. <laughs>、uh, oh yeah, but he does have the Union Jack on his shirt, so pro-British, yay! And he calls people tossers. Yep, yep, yep. But still,、um, Manchester Black is very English and also has telepathy and telekinesis. Um, his telepathy power is mind control, and his telekinesis is、uh, force field, flight, and energy projectile. And that is not a bad subset of skills.、Uh, moving on to the list,、uh, we got well,、uh, menagerie.、Uh, what, what can we say about menagerie here? She is, <laughs> yeah, you.、Um, she is.、Uh, hmm. How do I even want to say this? She is a、uh, wing. Dragon, worm, bug, thing.、Yeah. She's a monster in and of herself. Yeah, and also very, very active. If you know what I mean. Uh, well, you know, everyone, everyone sees those red tights. Yeah, true that, true that. And also, we got、um, coal case. Was it coal case? Right.、Uh, yes, co- menagerie and, and blacks seem to get the most. Uh, attention. The other two are the, just sort of hired muscle. Yeah, but still, um, Cole,、uh, I'm looking at his、uh, Cole Cass. Yes, Cole Cass here is not bad. He's one of those 
uh, basic muscly guy, big, able to take the hit and able to throw projectiles out of his hand. He'll be perfect for a Street Fighter character. Hadouken! 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 Choose a different move. Show you can. Show you can. Uh, but still, um, last on the list is the hat. And the hat here is a sorcerer or warlock. And his power is to control demons. And he says here he's Japanese. So yay. That's cool. This- he doesn't talk much, if I remember right. Uh, he's drunk most of the time, so yeah. Well, hats off to him. Ha! <laughs> Aha! Yay! So we got our so-called um, Elite Four here. Oh, see Pokemon reference here, Elite Four. Yay! Uh, but still, um, we got our bad guys here, and don't forget, we also had another cast of villains, which is the. Uh, Two warring countries. Uh, what was the name again? Uh, Bilalia and Pokolos, uh, po- Yeah, Pokolostani, yes. Um, wait, wait. You want, you want Pokemon references to the name of the place Pokolostani? <laughs> oh no. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. Wait, that's it, that's it. That's what the bioengineered weapons should have been. Not these giant, uh, insectile tanks. Just create a bunch of little Pikachus to electrocute everybody. Yay! Oh god. I can't shoot them, they're too cute! Pika! So, uh, say we enjoy this one. But still, you, you got those subset of villains, quote unquote, and, well, the, the focus here is, well, I, I think the Warring States are kind of the subplot story here, where it gets the story going, and the Elite Four here are just the engine to move it along. But you mean the, the conflict between the countries is in the background while it's really the Superman versus the elites ideals? Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, yeah. It's easy to see why the elite... They're, in a lot of ways, Su- Superman represents older Silver Age comics where heroes were good for goodness' sake and they were always fighting for justice. And the elite are more representing more recent comics, mm-hmm. newer creations where everyone's emotionally damaged, angry, not necessarily doing the right thing for the right reasons, or perhaps it's just happy coincidence. And it is sort of the old versus new clash. And I like what the elite can represent, why attitudes change, but sometimes the old attitudes are what we need. I guess that's why I look very favorably on Captain America, Superman, and Spider-Man. They still remain some of my favorite heroes. True. And that man I'm a little burnt out on. And, <gasps> yeah. I'm everywhere. I've had a fi- I've had a million reboots. Yeah. I'm better than everybody because I'm Batman. Yeah. They go Batman's hey, the best. Did you know I'm Batman? Uh, did, you, did you know I'm Batman? Because I am. Uh, oh, talking I'm about Batman. talking about Batman. I, I think we should I, I think we should point out that we should have a moment of silence for the late Adam West. Previously played the first Batman on TV, and well, uh, Adam West was special. <sighs> Heads off to him. I hope he's in a better place right now. But but not the hat's hat. That that's not very complimentary. Oh yeah, no, no, no. Adam West gave Bat made Batman more a champion of justice than than the brooding, angry, uh vigilante people have come to associate. Yeah. So even his Batman was a bit more noble yeah. in certain respects. Yeah, he he's just... Uh, I, I, how do I put this? I'm just trying to remember uh, way back when on TV where I get to see Batman fighting. That was so much fun on the CRT TV, just hearing the Batman team and just watching the pow. As a kid, everything's special. Uh, I miss him. Well, I can always remember him as Mayor West. There you go. But with the elite, the funny thing is we've already talked about, they, most of them come from very damaged backgrounds. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that has given them a very jaded view. And they're the, they are the example, kind of like what we talked about with the Accord art, mm-hmm. of might makes right. They get to decide because they have the power. But the funny thing is that once you take that upon yourself, Everyone fears you and there's no, you can't turn it off. The minute you've assumed the identity of I am the decider, I am the judge of the world, you have to do that every time. 
Yeah, and the thing with that is, like, with the Accord art, everybody needs to be brainwashed. With this story here, everybody is um, willingly agreeing with Manchester Black or the elite. A good example here is that Atomic Skull went on a rampage again through Metropolis, killing a lot of innocents. And once he got took down, it was Superman's... Well, Superman had the chance to kind of off him. But Superman says, no, that's not the right way. We should let the government decide what's right or wrong. Let, let him face justice. We superheroes are not jury, judge, and executioner. That's Judge Dredd's job. I am the law. The law. Still, and Manchester Black says, you know what, nah. He did... He beat up my team. He killed a lot of innocents. I'm ending this now. Mind blast. Pew! And let's not forget, uh, there was a young man, uh, whose father got killed. Yes, and said young was... man is Terence Baxter. His father was if, uh, Ifren? Ifren? EF? Oh, you know what? I'm just gonna link it with this. Ifrain. Yeah, Ifrain. Ifrain Baxter. Yeah, so, and Ifrain is one of the casualties, and he was, uh, Superman's greatest proponent, mm-hmm. even willing to vo- vo- uh, blah, blah, verbally discuss uh, and take on, play devil's advocate against Superman's adherence to justice. So, losing him, lose, that's asking on a more personal level to let, to let go of a grudge. And at first, his son, just can't do that. I mean, it, it feels just, it feels righteous to put an end to this violent person. But this young man also becomes the face of how people are reacting to the struggle of Superman versus the elite. They think, oh, it'd be better if Superman was like this, and then they see it, and like, no, okay, we were wrong. Yeah, and should we head to that direction now? I think so. I think we've covered the gamut. Lois is not a big part of all this. Yeah, and also we get to see the Fortress of Solitude with also the robots and stuff, so yay. You know, honestly, this doesn't really play into the big whole uh, DC animated feature film. This is just a one-off, so nothing much to talk about. So anyway, yeah, let's head on to the battle, or the setup to what happened. Well, for a time, I do believe that the, the Elite can really hurt Superman. I mean, he's getting the tar beat out of him by a coordinated team. And uh, there is that moment where they explode a blood capillary in his brain. That's no small feat. Which is scary, by the way. Which is scary, because if one guy could do that to Superman, just imagine what he could do to others who are not super-powered like him. Batman, you like him so much, dead with a thought. That's okay, because I have a different brain, because I'm Batman. I, yeah. I'm so cold-blooded that my brain doesn't even eat it anymore. It runs on pure Batman. Because I'm Batman. Uh, Batman, go to the corner. The court is full of shadows. I will blend the shadows. Because I'm Batman. So, yeah. I'm Batman. So, so yeah. After the elite have taken justice in their own hands by starting off with killing the Atomic Skull and then killing the leaders of the two warring nations... Superman says, no, that's not how you do it. And I'll fight for my beliefs and fighting them on the moon, which is cool. I hope they see Luna. So they fight and they fight and they fight and they fight and they fight. The fight doesn't go well for Superman. The the elite put up a strong fight. And yeah, after Manchester Black mind blasts Superman, they gang up on him and... I think Cold Case did an exploding sun trick. Uh, I, I, I well, forgot. that might have been swagger. I, I, I don't think the moon would have survived if you had that much power going off in one place. But still, um, his claim that he did in the heat of a thousand suns, I, I, I don't really remember the whole thing. But still, they beat Superman and what left of him is just his cape. Or is it? A cold case got a cold cape. Yo. But Superman survives and he is pissed. And he decides to go the, well, uh, the Elite Four were selling a lot of bad stuff and Superman decided to buy in. And yeah, 
not fun, not fun at all. It is funny to see how often um, the elite were relying on Superman to be the Boy Scout, to be the better person, and they feel like they can take advantage of that. But then they want to hide behind that when they realize it could come back to hurt them. That shows the weakness of their character, that they expect everyone else to play by the rules to keep them safe, but they won't do the same to keep others safe. Yeah, they have double standards, and you can't do that. Even you, Batman. I can do what I want because I'm Batman. <sighs> there are standards, and then there are bad standards. Ay, ay, ay. But still, Superman, for lack of a better word, goes eight his on the Elite Four, starting off with Menagerie. Uh, he poisons her with some kind of poison that makes all the um, worms or bugs or whatever it is that's infesting her body leave. And then Superman sucks the air out of the hat. And by this time, Cold Case and Manchester Black here are afraid. They're afraid that they're going to be killed by Superman. Which is a scary thought. You won't think that, would you? Unless you're in the Injustice universe. Hmm. Could be worse. You could be killed by Batman. <sighs> Batman. No, Batman. No. I can combine impersonations and try to deliver Bat Trump. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Uh, uh, but still, the, the, the elite. I, lo- I love the emphasis you, you put on that no. <laughs> <laughs> no. So, anywho. Uh, we, we get to see the Elite 2 being scurred because, well, two of their teammates were killed by the boy in blue. And the difference here is between Black and Cole is Cole still has that loyalty to his teammates, wanting to try and save them, while Black just wants to save his own butt. Yeah, I guess we can change him to Manchester Yellow. Yeah. Uh, I see what you did there. <laughs> eh, I try. Yeah. And but every, everyone is is afraid when they see Superman cross the line. Yeah, that, that's something they didn't expect because uh, I think Uncle Ben said this: "With great power comes great responsibility." And and since Superman is the most powerful of them all, even being able to beat Super Saiyan Goku. He has to take responsibility for his actions. And you're, you're seriously going to invoke the death battle fans? Yes. Oh, yes. I thought I, I thought I was supposed to be the trollish one. <laughs> oh, true. But still, uh, there's probably going to be a death battle tree between those two again because of fans raging. <sighs> but still. If, if you want Goku to lose again, <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, uh, but still, we, we get to see Superman letting loose, just running mayhem. I'm just going to skip to the end where Superman just beats up on Manchester Black. He corners him and somehow lobotomize Black with a fine precision eye beam through his eyes. What? Yep. Laser beams through the eyes to instant lobotomize, but... Rather than taking away Black's thoughts, it just takes away his powers, which is no small thing. <laughs> I will say the one Superman does have a reputation for power creep. He always gets a new ability to the point where you wonder if he is if there's anything he can't do. And there's one thing he, he there's one thing he can't do. Be Batman. No, no, I, I draw the line there. There's a Batman animated series where Superman dressed as Batman. Take that. Batman. Nobody oh, smiles. Batman doesn't smile. Uh, uh, okay. Oh, God. I don't know. Uh, you broke me. <laughs> oh, no, I haven't broke you yet. I still have to do Bat Trump. <laughs> I'm Bat Trump. I'm fantastic. I'm the greatest superhero in the world. People think about Superman, but it's very sad. Very sad. Big fan of Wonder Woman. Give her an eight. But I'm Batman, so I'm instantly a ten. 
I got Trump. <laughs> okay. Uh, Silva, you want to take over? <laughs> so I've, now that I've broken Norman, this was always my goal. Uh, basically the whole world is watching this and you, you can feel the fear growing with these people because when a hero puts themselves in a position where they're dictating terms, even if it's what people always wanted to see, they suddenly realize the consequence of that, the, the part of the dream they never bothered to consider. What next? I've just witnessed this guy brutally kill four people. What? There's nothing to keep him in check. What's, what is he going to do to me, to my loved ones? And yeah, the injustice timeline and the justice lords have, uh, they've shown what happens when superheroes become, when they shed any sense of self restraint. Eventually they begin to impose their will on the world and no one can stop it. And that's what, that's the thing we never really think about. If you have vigilantes going around just killing willy nilly, you realize there's nothing to keep you safe. You are not safe. It is the illusion of safety. And once you realize that, there's a whole new set of despair setting in. So I was so proud when Superman revealed his deception. I will admit the super bots saving everyone is, it's kind of Silver Age hokiness. Uh, but then again, I did say that it's the old versus new. So perhaps the Silver Age hokiness is needed. True, but I also think that the setup was uh, being foreshadowed beforehand. And we all know that Superman won't do the killings. He'll always have a contingency plan. He's almost like Batman in some way. Unless it's General Zod in a movie <sighs> with a bunch of stupid people who could just get out of the way. Then then he'll kill for no other reason. I'm not going to even justify that movie. I I I haven't even seen it and I you know it's not that... <sighs> Kneel before Zod's broken neck. <laughs> That's Superman. I do agree. Uh, Kneel. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> but still, um, you you were saying about Superman? Well, just that in that moment, he gave people a taste of what that world would be like, and for and perhaps that's what everyone needs to see at some point. You have to see the ugliness of violence unleashed. There was an old film where a man said, I have to, I must betray my ideals to defend them. And that's what Superman did for a moment. He slipped out and he even, he admitted how scary it felt to cut loose. You think it'd be liberation. You feel great. You just skip it along as you decapitate and snap next. <laughs> oh, <my nap>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But in reality, there's a certain terror at one's own ab- abilities and what could happen. And maybe that's even Batman has said, uh, it's too, it's too easy to go down that route. It's too terrifying to think of what I'd become. Yep. And that's the thing between heroes and villains is that fine line that they don't cross. That line where you're not Judge Jury and Executioner unless you're Judge Dredd. I'm, I'm referring to him a lot. And if the more you think about it, that guy is not stable. No, well, the whole his whole world is pretty much messed up and dying. Eh, true. Uh, humanity is on its way out, even though they don't want to admit it. But it's more it's more a satire. While well, Superman is the guy who would fight to keep humanity going. True, and like I was saying, s- superheroes here, their job is to enhance the law enforcement, not be them. Even though some heroes try to one up them. Um, if we take a look, see at how Marvel is doing it with their Avenger line, the Avengers are just a support team of heroes or people that stop super powered villains like Hydra or even Arms. They're basically the UN for countries that don't want to deal with problems like that. If that makes sense. Uh, I think they're more. Their first response, actually, there's a there's a great line in uh, the Green Lantern series Ion. It's a four parter, hmm. where Superman is telling the young Lantern Kyle Rayner, "Our role is not to live people's lives for them. When a problem arises, we swoop in, throttle the life out of it, not literally, 
uh, and then get out of the way so people can live their lives again. That's as far as it goes. And that is a true test of humility because a lot of people would think if I have this power, I should be dictating terms or lay down the rules. But heroes have a humility to say, no, I can't decide that. This is your life. You have to choose how you want to live it. True, true. And what did the Green Lantern say about this? He took it to heart. Mm. Uh, he learned the humility and eventually sacrificed the godlike powers of Ion to create a new opportunity. I won't spoil too much if people want to read it. Ah, all right. That's why Kyle Rayner is my uh, favorite Green Lantern. I don't know if he's still in it. Ah, but that's a superhero for another day. Yeah, true, true. Kyle Rayner, I'm just wondering. K-Y-L. Continue. Oh, he's doing the Google search. Uh, continue on, Silver, because I'm... Oh, he's the... Ah, uh, okay, he's that... Okay, because I only remember Hal Jordan and John Stewart. Well, Kyle came a little bit later. Uh, after DC was seemed obsessed with having its heroes fall. This was after Green... Hal Jordan went bad. But that, again, a story for another day. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But still, we were saying about um, the ending here and how, well, people are afraid of Superman. And yeah, I would be afraid too if an alien creature with immense superpowers were to barge in and stop me from doing anything. Yes, not fun. Even if it was Batman. And you know what? I I think here, like, if, let's just go what ifs. If Superman did take this route of being Judge Jury Executioner, I think Batman and the other heroes would stop him. Well, one can hope. There's, there's always the plan, but actually I guess that is the question. While Superman's dealing with all this, are Wonder Woman, Aquaman, Batman, and, uh, Gr- Green Lantern and all the others, are they just watching like, ooh, this is good, pass the popcorn? Hey, probably. Oh, oh. They think they killed him. Oh, that's rich. <laughs> you know how many times we thought Superman was dead? A lot. Yeah. And, and you know what? Personally, I think Batman was dealing something in Arkham. Uh, Wonder Woman is in Temescara. Green Lantern is probably in space. So all the heroes were not there somehow. Oh, what, what about Aquaman and Choose your words carefully. He can be pretty awesome or silly. He's in the ocean dealing with sea problems. That's outrageous! <laughs> oh, you're going to do that, Aquaman? Oh, God. Are you kidding? I, there's so many iterations. Okay. Even the Carl Drogo guy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but still, um, in the end, Superman decides that, no, uh, using violence is not the answer, and we should adhere to the law. And... Like you mentioned before, Silver, they have humility and, and let the people decide how to live their lives. And with that, uh, the movie ends. Well, with with everyone, <laughs> everyone except that poor professor alive. Oh, and the leaders of the two countries. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Actually, it's kind of funny. There's still a very large mess left in the wake. But we're left to assume it's a happy ending as Superman and Lois fly off with a kiss. Oh, yeah, true, true. And in all actuality, or, or, or in all reality here, sure, like if this were a comic, the aftermath of what happened is sure to have a big ripple in the storyline. But since this is the movie and it's ended, like, yeah, happy ending, no more continuity from that. No, nope, no more. And let's head on to final thoughts. Silver, what do you think about this one? Like I say, given all that Superman is is put through the ringer in so many stories, people kind of forget what heroes represent. And this this movie does show what a hero can do. Just calling others to be their better selves. It's not just beat the bad guy. It's show people the better way. And that is one of the things I celebrate about Superman. And it's nice to see his older view set tested against newer, more cynical well, okay, cynicism is anything but new, but the modern age take on superheroes has been very disappointing, trying to emphasize the worst rather than bringing out the best. So I, I greatly enjoyed this. It's one of the things I, I, it's one of the, my favorite DC animated movies, probably because a lot of the DC animated ones try to make everyone dark and broody and unpleasant. But I, I hope for more Superman stories like this. Granted, you can't have the same plot, but 
letting him show people that there's a way, there's a way beyond fear, beyond the immediate gratification to create something greater. And that's all I got. Yeah, and I agree with you with that. And as for me, I enjoy this comic because after looking at some of the superhero, well, some of the Superman stories we got recently, it's a breath of fresh air to get a story where Superman is able to let loose but control himself at the same time. And this shows that why he's the king of superheroes. Like, this shows that... Um, sorry, and, and this movie shows that why we like him. He's not perfect. He has flaws. But those flaws what make him quote-unquote human and relatable somehow. And doing the right thing is never easy. It's always simple to take the easy way out. But not for Superman. And like you mentioned before, he has humility. And it shows in this story here. And in the end, it's a very enjoyable story. And i trying to think of what other stories that DC has made recently with this in mind. And I think there's one where Superman kind of died. I'm trying to remember. Like... He, well, they're, they're, they did the death of Superman, but it was a very different tale than what we, uh, what did we see? Honestly, the Justice League's death of Superman arc was more true to it than, uh, Superman Doomsday was. Not that one. I'm thinking of where he absorbed a too much yellow sun. Oh. Oh, All-Star Superman. Yeah, that one. That one was good. That was another good one too. And, him giving Lois super strength for a few hours just so she knows how it feels to be Superman. That was cool. Good times. Yeah. So anywho, um, that's our review of, well, more of a discussion rather than a review. But yeah, I'm going to put it under this review. So anyway, um, that's it, review. And well... Uh, let's head on to what we all normally do. And what is that, Silver? That is the ponies. The ponies who do not kill. Yeah. They reform like nobody's business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And next week we'll be talking about episode 4, season 7. Uh, you remember what episode that, Silver? Let's see. I thought that's not... That's rock solid friendship, yeah? Yes. <clears throat> Yeah, rock solid friendship. That's what we're gonna be talking about next week. Oh, it's been so long. I get to be mod. This is my excited voice. Yay? I'm Batman. No, you're not. Uh, so anywho, yeah, next week we'll be going to review season seven, episode four, rock solid friendship. That's gonna be a fun one. Uh, yep, that's gonna be a fun one indeed. Well, looking forward to it. Indeed. So, anywho, uh, once again, I'd like to thank uh, myself, Lag, for sponsoring this review slash discussion. Uh, it's been fun for us to talk about this movie. Um, it's fun to rewatch it after so long. It gives me a new perspective on things. And, well, to thank the other Patreon supporters, uh, Lurker Cat, Twilight Genesis, Namrit Akotorius, Starstream, and also you, myself, like, thank you so much for supporting the, supporting the show. And if you guys at home would like to support the show too, that is at patreon.com slash the MBS show. Um, take a look, see, their tier is there. Um, with every support, you'll get full access to deleted episodes and also early access to the review and discussion podcast. And also, I thank you at the end of the show. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecil Quill. And we'll guys catch you next week with more ponies. Yes, pony, pony, ponies. See ya! I'm Bat Trump! No... No, 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 Trump, no, no, Trump. no, 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 no,
<laughs> I don't believe you're a citizen of this earth. I need to see your birth certificate. <laughs>